Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing with our Ace Attorney journey. Luckily, not like five million years after the last stream, like last time. Brain. I managed to trick my brain slightly because I recently got a treadmill. And by walking on it at a brisk pace, I was able to trick brain into thinking things were happy in the world and do this. Not enough that I was able to trick it into streaming Fire Emblem Blazing Blade. I still want to do that. Still want to at least give Fire Emblem a chance on the stream before I decide if I just want to do it on my own time. That's an ever, that's an ever going on combat with me. I was like, oh, I want to document my journey, but then I just never actually play the, 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 the damn game. Someday, eventually, who knows? But last time, we broke the Frenchman, and uh, now we're going to, I presume, enter into the end of this case by cross-examining Don Tigre. Or however, it, 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 I swear, his name is like Tiger, but with the E and the R swapped, so it's like Tigre. So... We're gonna see if we can break him down. I don't think it'll be that terribly hard, but who knows? Let's see how things go. I also wonder if we'll have to cross-examine Viola Cadaverini. I wonder if she'll have to be brought in. I wonder how long this, uh, this section will be. We'll have to wait and see. All right. So we're finally going to see the tiger on the stand. We've almost got this case won now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. But Godot picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if what he testified is the truth. You mean you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know, but if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get the feeling that we don't have the case-making evidence we're going to need. Hey, pal! Detective Gumshoe! What are you so jumpy about, Detective? Your hair's standing on end. Hey! That's the pot calling the kettle black a little, Miss Topknot! It's not a Topknot! Never mind about the hair, just calm down, alright? Uh, I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do. I kind of get wound up. Ah! No kidding. You gotta have something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Well, um... Hey, I'm gonna take a jog back down to the precinct. I could get some prints and ice for you if you got an hour. An hour? The trial will have reconvened by then. But Nick, we still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, right? True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out... It's really stuck. You said you could get some fingerprint analysis done in an hour. You bet! In that case, would you mind checking the prints on this for me? I assume that it's this, because unidentified fingerprints. Like, what else could have, like, because here's the thing. We don't only need fingerprints done, we need, like, a piece of evidence that is, like, specific to place the tiger at the place. So, I feel like the small bottle is, like, the only one we can do, especially because it explicitly says uh, unidentified fingerprints in the kitchen. So, I feel like it's the only thing. Is there anything else that matters? I don't think so. Like, especially because nothing else really says fingerprints. I think it's just a small bottle. If you're going back to the station anyway, could you find out whose prints are on this? Oh, hey! That's a small bottle I gave back to you this morning, right? Yeah. I think it's time we solve the last mystery of who the prints belong to. Sure thing, pal! Actually, that's been gnawing at me too! Small bottle given to Detective Gumshoe. Okay, I'll get this up to the lab right away! Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. I feel like that happens a lot, where we have to stall to a degree. This is pretty much the final showdown, I guess. It's time to separate the phonies from the real guys!
So we have to stall for like 45 minutes or so. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Godot, did you find this Furio Tigre? I even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job, no problem. T tamed him? The guy's name may be Furio Tigre, but come on. He's pretty lively. Be careful, he still bites. Very well. Please show Mr. Tigre to the stand. There's just silence. Um, witness, please. Ah! <laughs> she hides under the table. Don't hide under the table, Maya. Unless there's room for me down there, too. Maya, um, would you mind? What do you say to me? N -n -n nothing. I didn't say nothing, honest. Who could have guessed that fear would induce a bad Brooklyn accent in the judge? I got business to take care of, you hear me? So who the hell called me into this hole? Was it you, Spikey? Uh, no, of course not. It was the judge. <laughs> he disappeared. <laughs> Your Honor? Oh dear, I am. Um, I seem to have dropped my pin. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me, just carry on with the proceedings as normal. That's it. We're doomed. Maybe you used to hear me! I said, who the hell was it that called me in here? There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. What do you say? There's no point struggling. You're caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. And I'm the one that hauled you in. Uh, too cool. <laughs> Don't let him get the better of you, Nick. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy! You mean you didn't attend at the previous trial of Maggie Beard? Maggie who? I've got more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas! Of course! Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Please tell us... <laughs> I love that he's just still gone. Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. Hmm. Phoenix Wright. You's the one who set this up, didn't you? You's gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Gross. Get a grip, Nick. You're the one that's hiding underneath the table. The tiger's alibi. I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all of my time in my office. I got whales lined up to borrow cash from Tinder Linda every day. You just want to check my alibi, just act via letter. Ah, at last I found my pin. <laughs> Very well then, Mr. Wright, you're crossing- Ah! Then he's gone again. What is it? Please, goodness. If you could refrain from shouting, you don't like that. I know the kind of games that guy in the blue plays. That low life ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. Low life? Me? Listen up, Smarty. Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to this case, I'm gonna bill you $50,000 and you're just gonna borrow the cash from me. Uh, that's one long contract I refuse to sign. And don't think it ain't gonna hurt when you tangle with the tiger. I don't think that's legally, like, able to be done. Huh. I love a good spectator sport. D just a minute. That's really not... This witness is... How can I put it? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side and he'll bite everyone's heads off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. Great! You better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. Great. The court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of the witness. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick. Come up from under there already, would you, Maya? I don't think this is fair. 
This is a murder trial. I don't know nothing about no murder. Well, first things first, we gotta save. In case things go crazy. So, the first thing we need to decide uh, is what statements require pressing. I don't know nothing about no murder. I feel like that's a nothing burger. No need to press there. I was tied up with business. We can... So yeah, I got whales lined up to borrow cash. I feel like that's a little interesting, but mostly irrelevant. And you just want to check my alibi, just ask Violetta. I feel like... Hmm... I don't think... Well, it depends. This one is obviously very important, because it is the meat of his alibi. The one that says, I was tied up with business in December last year. So we can probably be like... What kind of business? Who were you meeting? Let's... <laughs> Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Is he talking about Vi Viola Cadaverini? She writes everything in my scheduler. December, mainly in the office. That's what it says, so that's where I was. That seems like a rather sketchy schedule. There he goes again. What the tiger did all December isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder, so... I say we press harder! Mr. Tigre, what do you want? Uh, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail... This is a dead end, Shrite, and you know it. Remember the rules. No, it's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day, too? Maybe you say listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. I never seen that young kid before. I do believe that the witness's last statement was important. Um, Mr. Godot, if you could please... Mr. Tigre, the court asks you to add that last statement to your testimony. Hmm. Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, Your Honor, and ask him yourself. The day you was talking about, I was in the office, too. I never saw that kid before. Now, didn't we have something that specifically, like, we could use the... His, like, yeah, his jockey horse thing. On December 3rd, meet with the tiger. I believe this is a time to present evidence. Normally, I would press on every statement. But because there's a penalty system, uh, let's roll the dice. Objection. Mr. Tigre, you claim you didn't know Mr. Glen Elg. But it appears that Mr. Glen Elg knew you. What? Mr. Elg left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date, December 3rd. D December 3rd? That's the day of the murder! So, Mr. Tigre, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glen Elg. Because on the very day of the incident, you met with him! Uh. <laughs> not bad! He was actually not bad! So sorry? I was just messing with you. To see how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. That's one compliment I can do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Um, witness, please remember that you're under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. You was calling me a liar? Is that what you're doing? Ruh! <laughs> Ruh roll. So you're saying that your claim to have never seen that kid before is the truth. I said I'm dead serious. You'd better believe that's the truth. Huh. And then I'd say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. And that is, while you testify for the court again, Mr. Tigre. Oh, yes. Um, would you mind indulging the court witness? You never actually met the victim? It's got to be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. The victim, Glenelg. I ain't no liar. I never met Glenelg. There was some lame guy with that name, though. Wanted to borrow cash from me. 
I set up a meeting with the guy at my office, Tinder Linda. I waited around for him, but he ain't ever showed. I never been up, even been to that Tresbian joint you see. I need to remember I, I can't press on everything. I see. That all seems perfectly logical. You had arranged to meet with the victim, but he didn't show up. I've heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Didn't I tell you that I got a big deal going down today? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. That bill's going straight to you, right? Uh, I, again, I don't think that would stand. Then again, this is solve murder cases in three days. Wacko world. Remember to stay hydrated. If anything, uh, Mr. Tigre could probably stand to be a bit more hydrated. His skin definitely looks like it. Okay. Now, the thing that we need to do is uh, go into it. Remember, can't just press on everything. Can't just press on everything. Can't just press on anything we need to select the right things. I ain't no liar. I never met Glen Elg. I don't know. There was some lame guy with that name, though. Wanted to borrow cash from me. I set up a meeting But the guy. I went around. He never showed. I ain't never been. So let's mark down the important pieces of information. <laughs> and if anything, we also have to be on the lookout for any pieces that we don't need to press and that we can present evidence to because if we press on the wrong thing, then we could be cooked. I ain't no liar. That doesn't seem important. There was some lame guy with that name wanted to borrow cash from me. I don't think, because, yeah, set up a meeting with the guy at the office, waited around for him, but he never showed. Is there anything in all that that is important? Do we care to present or press? I ain't never been to that Tresbian joint. Hmm. So it's really only this. There was some lame guy wanted to borrow cash from me. Hmm. And I don't think that we have, like, yeah, we... Let's go through our evidence. Is there anything in here that says Glenelg already met with him? That John's debt. Victim's lottery ticket, apron, potassium cyanide, victim's prescription. You see bomber, millionaire radio, viola, and tresbian matches. Oh. So I assume that we could present them and be like, ah, if you've never been there, how do you have these? If we actually, come to think of it, couldn't we present this as well? I'm not going to. I'm just saying that it feels like you should be able to say, how have you never been to a restaurant that you have half a million dollars in that they owe you that much money. You think you'd be there. But I believe the proper thing is to present these because they show definitively that there is Tresbian, like, literal. This is a thing that came from that restaurant in your office. How have you never been there? Bam. Mr. Tigre, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? What you talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. What? If you've never really been to Tresbian before, what was a book of the restaurant's matches doing in your desk? You've been snooping around in my stuff too, wise guy? What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no broad controlling me. Order, order, well witness. I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? Ah! Sorry, I'm terribly sorry, forgive me! I ain't no pussycat. I I don't go back on what I said. But okay, I was at the joint that day. What? But listen good, all right. I might have been there, but I still never met the kid. 
That, that seems like the dumbest lie he could tell. Well, well. Looks like an order just came for another testimony. How, how the hell is he gonna... I mean, this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Elg that day. And he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. <laughs> that feels like the dumbest lie he could tell. All he had to say... All he had to say was, Oh, wait a minute. Actually, yeah, I did go down there once, you know, to check up on my uh, little, like, rainy day fund of debt that he owes me, that Armstrong guy. He owes me a big bush of moolah, half a million dollars. So I went up there to check on him once, and he gave me these complimentary matches. That's all he had to say. That's all he had to say. Then he wouldn't have to contradict himself that badly. He is a dumb man. He is a dumb man. Stuka. So, remember, we can't press on anything. Unless, then again, who knows? Maybe it's been, maybe it floated away, but I'm not going to press on anything needlessly. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place was not already, I was gonna be, so I split. I heard the cop's sirens on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. I feel like that one will be important. The, I heard sirens. My C, you didn't actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it! If I wait around here any longer, I ain't even gonna make the normal express! No more stupid questions! Ha. Huh. No problem. Anytime Trite presses you on something irrelevant, I'll see he pays a penalty. But Mr. Godot, that's my job! Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it! Yes, sir! The Special Express ain't cheap, right? Just so you know since you was paying. Oh man, doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? No, because this is Japanifornia. I don't think so. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be. I heard the cop's sirens, so I went back to my office. Hmm. Okay, let's... Meet with the kid. No. So I want a degree scene? I don't think so. The guy was laid out over the table. Stiff as concrete. Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I have thoughts. I have thoughts, actually. Because... Uh, good thing it hasn't been too long since I played, but... I don't think you, you would have... I don't think you would have seen him. Immediately, I don't think. And plus... Like... Hmm. I'm trying to think, because I don't think that we could just say, oh, like, uh, hibbledy jibbledy, Armstrong had already moved the bodies. I, like, yeah, because that, that might could be one thing. We could say, maybe, like, you wouldn't be able to see the body, but, well, then again, the body, hmm. Bah, 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 bah. Who knows? I guess you could say that the body was moved back, so it would be in its original position, so that idea is out. But, if I remember correctly, there are the little, like, table dividers, so we wouldn't be able to see him, like, explicitly without walking in a while. A decent way in. Hmm. I'm gonna... But I feel like this would be an important thing, like, how did you see him? This seems like an important question, right? You mean you saw Glen Elg's dead body? I guess I did, but I only saw him from behind. He was wearing some raggy bit of cloth he called a hat. And what time was this? I don't know. 
Huh? You know what winds me up more than anything else in the world? Watches! Round watches! I ain't gonna pollute my paws with some ticking henpecker! Out of interest, Mr. Tigre, what winds you up the second most? Huh? What do you think? Square watches! Okay, is this guy for real? Look, all I needed to know was that something bad was going down at that place. Hmm. And would this be something that we could press on? Could we press this? Because, again... Because I don't think this... Yeah, I was supposed to meet with the kid. There's nothing more to be heard from that. When I opened the door to the scene, I saw one ugly scene. Then he clarifies by saying he saw the dead body. Figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was going to be, so I split. I feel like we could get maybe a bit more of that. What about the next one? I heard the cop sirens on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. Hmm. Like, it depends. Let's see. So you didn't actually set foot inside the restaurant then. The tiger is a busy cat. I don't hang around for no one. I ain't got time to be caught up in no murder investigation. So, when exactly did you pick up the matches? There are matches just inside the front door. Our detective friend wound up in trouble with the chef after taking five books home. Poor gumshoe. It's almost enough to make a man cry. Hmm. The thing I'm gonna say is... I don't, I don't think you should be able to have seen him. Because he does say he only saw him from behind. Only from behind when that shouldn't be possible because of the dividers between the tables. Which is also the divider between, like, the chair and, like, the, the cash register area. So, I don't think... I do not think that it would go good. So, But what would we give to prove it i guess maybe the floor plans yeah because uh i don't have my cursor to show up but right in front of the like the cash register area that little like semicircle that's the door and it shows how it opens so the door would open and that would be the front area he would have to step in a decent way before he even saw the body i guess you could still technically say that it was from behind, but he specifically says that mentions the hat. He doesn't mention, like, anything else, seeming like he only saw, like, the guy's head. I'm gonna say... Is there anything else that we could present that would make it? Like, maybe the crime photo? Hmm. Well, that's the only thing I can really think of. Because in terms of evidence... In relation to being able to see the body, I'm going to say... You're something of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tigre? No one escapes the tiger's clutches! Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. And no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this, trite? A new line of irrelevant questioning? These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tigre. From there, your field of vision would have covered an area of, say, something like this. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, that's not possible. Ha! If the core would like to think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables is a tall partition. Why, that's true. Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. Ooh, he's sweating. So, from the entrance of Trey Bien, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day. Because you met with him! Wrong! Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. 
but the defense just proved that point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo is not Glen Elk, but a fake. What? Yeah, did that 30 minutes scrabble your brain, Mr. Gado? Because you remember that was our thesis here? I, I skipped over it because Gado's idiocy is eating my brain. The real killer posed as the victim. He had just killed and acted out a charade. That will do. This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? I feel like a question is going to come up, so let's save. You say the killer murdered Glen Elg, and then impersonated the victim in a performance for Victor Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright revealed the identity of this criminal to the court. Like, I can only assume that it was Furio Tigre himself. Granted, you'd think that he would be obvious, but, like, he was like, ah, yes, the, the red Glen Elg. Obviously. But, but, yeah. Obviously. The killer is Furio Tigre. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness. <laughs> now that's cute. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Maybe you just don't understand. The tiger is the king of the jungle. So I dare you to say it again. Come on! You got the guts! You can't threaten me, Mr. Tiger, eh? It's the defense! Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Mr. Wright! Sounds to me like you must be you, old man. You've got guts, I'll give you that. M -m Mr. Wright, do not leave me to handle this alone! Huh. Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mr. Godot! Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. The old man didn't see just the victim, oh no, no. This herbing girl got him a, brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. There's no other question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains, he saw the accused put poison in the coffee. Yes, it was the waitress who poisoned the coffee. <laughs> Very impressive, Mr. Godot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Huh. Found your pin at last, Trite? It was in my pocket. <laughs> but anyway, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glenelg, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glenelg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Beard, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? It could only be Viola Cadaverini, right? There's nobody else that had, like, she works a Furio. Like, and plus the only other woman that's here is Lisa Basil and her hair doesn't match at all. It has to be Cadaverini. Who is this woman? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's an employee of Tender Lender. You's making a big mistake. Do you know who Violeta's grandfather is? You better be going home in a... You better be going home in an truck tonight, if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Beard, has stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy, and she had a kind of cackling laugh. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Beard seems to have seen. The earpiece worn on the victim in his left ear when the eardrum was ruptured. 
and the radio show he was supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice, once for real and once for show. And Mr. Furio Tigre, the only person who could have committed the crime, is you! Witness, what have you got to say? That's cute. Sorry? You was alright. I could do with a guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to charter a jet to get me to my meeting now, but... I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about? You just got it all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you missed one thing, real important thing. But that can't be. I was in the joint that day, and I met that kid too. But I couldn't have poisoned him, you see? What do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? <laughs> the stream's about Edgeworth. Ah, I, for I keep forgetting the Edgeworth redeem. Ha, ah. <laughs> what a troublemaker. Troublemaker? Looks like we're going to need another one for the road. One more steaming cup of hot testimony. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I will give you one more chance to testify. What happened that day at Tresbian between yourself and the victim? It's actually, uh, Tiger is how you pronounce the name. Ah, I guess yeah, that kind of makes sense. Blah, 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 blah. All right, oh, let's see if this actually is the last testimony. Who knows? It might not be. Yeah, I loaned Elk Cash about a hundred thousand dollars. That day was we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his payback date. See, so anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know. Real lucky. Actually, it's... Yeah, T. Gray. <laughs> you, never, you never know how some names are going to be spelled since you can't hear them. So what makes sense? If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. But how does that explain anything? Why weren't you there? Now I see that principal amount you loaned to Mr. Elg was $50,000. Yeah, well, you just got the vig to take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice as principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. He got that half a million just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive? He has to have one, but what is it? It has to be something to do with the MC Bomber virus. Because, hmm. Considering that the virus, as far as we've seen, has mostly been targeting the police department records, it's possible that he has, like, a, a, like more reason to do it because more than likely because actually let's quickly take a look at my da, da, da. where is the there it's here so it's possible that elg originally like placed the virus's price at five hundred thousand dollars but then had to haggle down to a hundred thousand But then he won the lottery, but for some reason, Tigre needed the bomber virus. Here's a question. How the heck did Tigre manage to not only change his skin tone, but manage to fool the entire court with a cardboard badge? Because this is japan -ifornia, where we solve cases in three days or you get the guilty verdict. It's a mad world. Hmm. 
And, and again, the fact that Mask to Mask is doodled in the corner haunts me. So yeah, more than likely, Elg originally wanted 500,000 for the bomb, the MC Bomber virus, but uh, Tigre then said, no, 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 you give, I only, it'll just pay off your debt and nothing more. But then he won the lottery, and then he didn't even have to pay, uh, have to do the thing. He didn't even have to give him the MC Bomber virus. He was like, I'm just going to pay you in my lottery winnings. And T. Gray would not have it, so he poisoned him. And then leveraged Armstrong to help cover everything up. But let's see. Meh. His motive? Um, he has to have one, but what is it? So let's see. Cross-examination. And more than likely, we still have the penalty in play, so... Meh. Hmm. First things first, we shall save in paranoia in case something catastrophe goes wrong. In case my brain collapses and I just die. I loaned Elg about $100,000. That day he was... But he said that he loaned him 50000 and then it went up to 100000 Eh. Maybe that's important, maybe not. That day, he was due. So anyway, he tells me he got in the way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy. Yes, I won half a million bucks. If it w if that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Hmm. I'm trying to think what lines are the ones that we really want to press on. Because... Which ones seem important? That one doesn't seem important. While you go crazy trying to navigate a minefield of testimony, remember to stay hydrated. <laughs> Give your evidence and check over. Because I, I think most of my evidence, like, the evidence has to be related to this guy. Viola's medical papers will be given at some point. MC Bomber has to be important. Because it's possible that he knew that the MC Bomber... Actually, that's another thing. Maybe he didn't even need the MC Bomber virus to take out the police department computer evidence stuff. He just wanted it because it's potentially worth millions of dollars. But the cardboard paper badge, I don't like... Like, maybe we could spring it on him eventually, but I don't think it's relevant on any of these. That day was due. I don't think that that's an important to press. Tells me he's gotten a way to pay up. Considering the... Hmm. So maybe that? I'm about to flatten the guy. Irrelevant. Yes, I won. Half a million bucks. I don't think that's important. I, wanna, I, I just feel like pressing this one because it's the only one that stands out. It mentions the waitress. Maybe we could press him and be like, then who was the waitress? What did she look like? And try to get him to actually trip up, maybe? The waitress. You mean... The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? Wait, didn't you do this before? No. I've never done this case before. I don't... <laughs> that would be a very big blunder on my memory <laughs> if I forgot doing this. <laughs> if she hadn't gotten the way, things would have been bada-bing, bada-boom, over and done with. Maybe I should push a little on this. Hmm. As to how things would have been, I don't think that's important, but at the same time, the... <laughs> The the mask to mask case. I needed to ask something that I didn't think was important, so it could be maybe. Mm. But mm. actually, that's a... well. Then again, there's nothing that we could see ask about what Maggie did, because he'll just say, "Ah, oh, she put poison in the diddly." To be fair, it has been a bit since you last streamed. The last time you caught me streaming, cause while yes, 
the one stream was a long time ago. I actually did manage to stream four days ago. Because brain. Darn brain. Brain. But yeah. Thanks to stream schedule has been a bit since I made it easy for people to catch my stream, I guess you could say. But yeah, actually, uh, how things would have been, I think, might have been, might be the proper course of action. Because ask about what Maggie did. He'll just say, oh, she brought over the coffee. Maybe she put something in it, and then he the Glen Oak died. So, and if worse comes worse, we can probably press and do it again. And hopefully not get penalized. Uh, ask how things would have been. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? Are you so there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back. That's all. I'm a businessman. It was all coming together before that waitress got in the way. Hmm, as far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than recouping his loan, Mr. T Tigre had no motive for killing the victim. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. The, t the tiger's motive, huh? I was after that. I didn't have any other reason to kill the guy. Again, my theory is that he wanted the MC Bomber. Because, again, he has connections to the criminal underground black market. He could easily sell copies of the MC Bomber virus for bibbly bibbly bunches of money. And considering that Maggie Beard said that there was a disc with MC like Bomber at the table that vanished, and this MC Bomber computer virus was then found at Tender Lender... Wait, doesn't that seem strange? He asked for a hundred thousands, but his bill is a million. Uh, no, he the bill is a hundred thousand. Because if we go all the way to this MC Bomber for to eliminate a hundred thousand dollars, I still don't understand why there's a cartoon bomb over five hundred thousand, which is why I believe that maybe he wanted to sell. That could have been it. Glen Elk might have wanted to actually sell the MC Bomber virus himself, but when he couldn't find a buyer for it, maybe, he told Tigre, he's like, fine, I'll give you this virus if you wipe away my debt. But then he won the lottery. It's just, it's, it's, it's just kind of weird that half a million dollars comes up three times. The, that... Armstrong is in debt for 500,000. The 500,000 shows up here and the lottery ticket was for 500,000. But yeah, he was after the $100,000. Although it is weird because at one point Tigre says that he loaned Elg $100,000, but then says that it was actually $50,000 and interest like shot it up to 100,000. Hmm. But again, considering that Glen Elk worked at the place that made, well, that allowed him to make the MC Bomber virus or made the MC Bomber virus, and it's potentially worth millions, obviously Tigre was after that more than just money because he could forgive the debt of a hundred thousand and then sell it for millions, and because Glen Elk won the lottery to wipe away his debt. I say that it be him be So you just intended to get back the hundred thousand dollars Mr. L owed you, correct? I loan the guy the cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the hundred thousand dollars is what you're really after. Objection. What are you getting at, Trite? What else would a moneylender be after but money? Oh, the moneylender was after money, but money in a totally different league. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. What is that? A computer virus, your honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer virus is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? 
What does one of those do? I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. So several million dollars? Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would be normally bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glen Elg had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glen Elg was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. Jesus, is it just me or is every lawyer trying to compete on who has the most flowing locks? Exactly. Everybody in this game has luscious hair. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elg put up in order to borrow the money. Objection. You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get hold of that program? Exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense, but he's by no means an idiot, trite. A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could, provided that he had time. But what if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. And when choices disappear, make sure to make the right important choice and stay hydrated. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. T Tigre need money to the tune of one million dollars? Now I need to present... What would I... Hmm. I assume that we want to present the medical papers. Because... This would be his motive. He got into a traffic accident, and now he's, like, being hounded by the the Cadaverini family to repay the medical bill that he caused. So... Hmm. I say yes! In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? Seriously, if you show this to people, they might assume that that's actually Phoenix Wright getting hit by a car. An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital, where she underwent surgery. How much of this do you know? These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. And yet, when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million dollars? A preposterous sum! Someone should sue these HMOs! Ah, no one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. T. Gray had no choice but to pay. And moreover, why isn't Phoenix Wright more ticked that Tigre impersonated him? Probably because, like, he's focused on the job right now. And when he's not focused on the job, he's scared of Tigre. He's like, okay, gotta get, uh, gotta get Beard off the hook. Gotta focus on the case. Because, like, when he actually is, like, you show the fake little badge to people, he does get kind of ticked. He's like, how did anybody fall for this? because his very life depended on it. Did his, does his sprite actually kind of become kind of tiger-like when he grows? That's amazing. Order, order, order! You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright? Indeed it did, simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. Did you say Cadaverini? Bruto Cadaverini, mob boss in charge of all underworld activity in the city, and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. <laughs> Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. You were desperate to acquire that one million dollars Bruto Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decide to sacrifice Glen Elg's life to pay your debt. 
You know, I, I should have remembered that part. Brain was dumb. On the day of the murder, Mr. Tigray's sole intention was to get his hand on this CD. Glen Elg had no way of paying back the $100,000, and Mr. Tigray knew it. But then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tigray would prefer to say never happened, but he can't and neither can I. My personal theory of why Godot has gray hair is because of the amount of coffee he drinks. It altered his DNA. <laughs> Honestly, in the Phoenix Wright universe, I could see that happening. Coffee addiction. Turns your hair white. The lottery win. Exactly. At the 11th hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars on the lottery, which left Mr. Tigray with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. So he resorted to illegitimate means. That's crazy! He murdered Glen Elg and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Beard for the crime. Mr. Tigray posed as Glen Elg. While Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Beard. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. Actually, I think I just noticed something. I want to check. His head's facing the wrong way. I wonder if that's a I wonder if that's a meta hint to you. Cuz they show that they show this photo a lot. Did he slip in sleeping powder or poison? He slipped in specifically, it says here, potassium cyanide. And then he slipped the uh, the container of it into Maggie Beard's pocket to frame her for the crime. But yeah, that's kind of cool that they kind of show that Glen Elg's body was moved and they forgot, like, like, they didn't forget because nobody else saw it initially so they wouldn't be able to say, like, oh, the head moved. But as a meta thing, the player can look at this photo that they show again and again and again and you know, oh, this is the real death of Glen Elg. But then, the crime photo shows his head facing the other direction, subtly implying that between the flashback moment and the factual court account, the body had been moved. That's kind of interesting. Same thing with, like, the pose and stuff. Normally, you would be like, oh, they just, uh, did, they just kind of changed the pose because that's how you do it. But I like that it can technically be taken as a hint. God, don't you just hate it when your eye twitches a lot? Oh, I hate that, too. I, that happened to me a lot when I had bad sleeping habits. But when I actually started going to bed at the same, or at least a relative same time, rather than just all over the place, it, it's mostly gone away. I think that's what happened with mine, at least, because my eye twitched a lot like that. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Like I said, Trot, that's crazy. No one could pull off a stun like that. For starters, there's no way the chef could have been kept the dark about it. Yeah, because he's in for half a million against Tinderlender. But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money, too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. T. Gray's plan. Order! Order! Silence or I will clear the court! Gra <laughs> you put on a good show, Spikey. If you want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You say not dressed up like that kid, created a witness, then framed someone! If I did something that crazy, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. You do? Despite your appearance, you're very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Beard had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright? Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Shrite? What was the trick you say Mr. Tigre performed to frame the accused? 
Now I just need to know what to present. Do I present the the fake badge? Do I present the uh, the magazine clipping saying I was trounced on December 5th? Hmm. I'm going to say the the paper badge because we can say we found the paper badge at Tinder Lender in at least showing that he could do it. Wait, if Tigre owed one million dollars and the victim won half a million, I'm sure that Tigre only would be able to pay half of it. Yes, that's why he killed him and took the MC Bomber disc. Because the MC Bomber disc is worth millions of dollars when sold on the black market, rather than half of what he owed. But yes, I do believe the paper badge is the thing I need to present, because it shows that he had the possibility of impersonating a lawyer. So... What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. Consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Mr. T. Gray, you didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. A month ago in this very court, you posed as me. What? That's... that's... The truth. But... the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although... Now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you, standing in here, this very court a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most disreputable, shabby defense I had ever seen! Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove that attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it is him? Uh, hmm. Hey, forget about it, yeah? I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You, you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Not to mention Tigre looks more buff than Phoenix. Yeah, but this is Japanifornia. Have you no pride, sir? This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trat, here in court we deal with people's lives. Uh, Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor? Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No! And how- and we don't have proof, do we? Darn it. In the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigre are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we've come so far! You say impersonated Glen Elg, you say impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. But we have enough, like, I guess this is part of the whole decisive evidence bit. But I feel like we do have enough, like, like, enough going on. Like, he had the MC Bomber virus. And Miss Beard says that she saw the MC Bomber disc on the table that day, but it wasn't found by police, and then it's found in Tinder Linder. And again, if we have proof that he was in debt to the Cadaverini to the tune of a million dollars, and the pressure was on, like, basically, I guess, but it's just like, to me, why would somebody who poisoned coffee pass out after they poison coffee and see a guy die? That's my question. Like, how would she poison the coffee? And again, this guy admitted it. He's like, oh, yes, I saw it. But then that also means that he would have seen her swipe the $500,000 ticket. None of it makes sense. Ah! Godot would know about poisoning coffee. Would he? He would know about drinking coffee. Ah. Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger. We are gonna get mauled, you got that? All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Ah. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. 
if I just had one more piece of evidence. One more piece of evidence and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. Oh, uh, Gumshoe, could you come in with the, uh, the, the stolen bottle of medicine? This witness's cross-examination is over. You are free to go, Mr. Tigre. Who holded it? Uh... My dude! Your Honor! Wait! D Detective? Detective Gumshoe! Sorry I took so long, pal! I... I, uh... I sticked everything on this! My badge, the works! So here it is! My heart's counting on this, too! What is it, Detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive proofs! It's the final decisive piece of evidence! What? And then I guess we all stepped out for a moment to catch our breaths. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab! And while you get results from the lab, remember to stay hydrated. Running all the way from the lab to the courthouse probably isn't that healthy. The results? About the prince, pal! From the medicine bottle! Oh, so do you know who the prince belonged to? Do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know! So tell us! They're the tigers, aren't right? I knew it! <laughs> you bet! Clear as crystal all over the bottle! The Furio Tigre's paw prints, all right! That's great! We've got him now, Nick! What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here! He's laid everything on the line for this, Nick! I know. Look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't mean it make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glen Elk's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle, it doesn't really make any difference now. I knew it. Great. No matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. Ah, it's alright. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Um... Detective Gumshoe? But Maggie! You've been working on something for me? Sorry I let you down, Maggie. Well, I know you didn't do it. I'm a detective! I'm supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry! Well, get out of your hair now! Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked hard on to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. I feel like it would still be important because the evidence was found in the kitchen. And Armstrong says that he moved the body at the behest of Tigre to the kitchen so they could fake the thing. I feel like that would be important. You know what, stupid? Gumshoe only appears once in Apollo Justice and that's his last appearance ever. Oh, that's a that's mean. Bring back Gumshoe, justice for Gumshoe. Justice for Gumshoe. Hmm. Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor? I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yes. And again, I feel like it should be actually decisive. I feel like it would be good. So it's just like... Bah, 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 bah. Hmm. Don't keep us all in suspense, Trite. Show us. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been no to no court before. We use lawyers to know how to blow things out of proportion. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. 
Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I feel like we can. It was found in the kitchen. Has his fingerprints on it. I'm really backed into the corner here, but maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. That's an interesting thing that the game said. Phoenix said something along the lines of he thinks he knows where this is going, right? Hmm. Hmm. Like, obviously we have to present this because it's the new thing and not an old thing. So we have to present this. In fact, there are a lot of characters that get forgotten, including Larry, Wendy, and Mia. Mia?! Mia gets forgotten in the later series. Like, I guess it kind of makes sense because she died in the first game and she doesn't really need to appear as often as Phoenix has grown as a lawyer and Maya grows as his, like, confidant. But still, that's kind of insane that old characters like Larry, Wendy, and Mia get forgotten. And Gumshoe. That's kind of mean. Although I suppose... The char like the people making the games could just be like, oh, we want to go in a different direction, explore different things. Hibbity jibbity. Mm. Well, I guess there's nothing about it. Let's present the small body. This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victims? Your Honor, naturally the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tigre! What? But Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what this bottle contains, except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prints are on that pansy-looking bottle, is that what you're saying? Well, what the hell's in it anyway? So we're obviously not going to say medicine. A phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. Mr. Tigre, this is the decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... Like, obviously Armstrong's oils and victim's ear medicine doesn't seem good, but potassium? Saying that his prints are on the potassium cyanide bottle would potentially, like, freak him out. Because he wouldn't care about the ear medicine or Armstrong's oils, right? So it has to be the potassium cyanide. Then again, this could be a... <laughs> then again, this could be another one of those silly things where we're supposed to say something, but the game is clearly steering us where we're not supposed to say the ear medicine. Phony evidence. So I'm gonna say cyanide. This bottle contains potassium cyanide. <laughs> Everything in this court is phony, including this phone. Throws it at his head. Go, Nokia, I choose you. P potassium cyanide? The po poison used to murder Mr. Elg, your honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigre, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? <laughs> you make a good clown, you'd know that. What? You ain't never gonna get this to stick. You're just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that, that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix. That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no. This is the bottle we found traces of poison in. Don't mess up the tiger. You're gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown and it was made of glass. That cheap piece of trash. Don't look nothing like it. You just admitted it. You admit you know what the poison bottle looks like. And even he knows. <laughs> Godot's like, God damn it. This idiot just basically confessed. Got him. At last. What? Why's everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle with the cyanide in it. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. 
Don't let that cozy looking suit fool you, people. That lawyer's just playing games. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor, tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out? Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Uh, gar But just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison! We got a bot in the chat. Be gone, bot. To hell with you. Right as we prove that this guy's guilty, we get to send a bot to hell. Now that's how you do things in this world. Uh, um, you just don't know who you's messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black market. You think I'm gonna let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure, the last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer, it was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. We can see her. Oh! Whoa! We haven't seen a breakdown like that in ages! What happened? Did he break the lights? What's going on? It looks like a. It looks like a blackout. Okay, that's hilarious. Well done, Trite. I saved my 17th cup of coffee just for you. He threw it at us in the dark? <laughs> Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. <laughs> that guy is just frozen. It's like he broke a rib into his chest cavity. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe. But if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Now then, how are things going with Mr. Tigre, Mr. Godot? He's been arrested on suspicion of the murder of Glenelg, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Beard was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. And in the absence of genuine evidence. But the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He was very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Furio Tigre is a truly frightening criminal. Ah. The truly frightening one is that defense attorney over there. Goodell. Why is he saying that we're scary? He's the one that's throwing hot coffee everywhere. Well, I am now in a position to deliver my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Beard, not guilty. That's nice. <laughs> Once again, Phoenix wasn't ticked that Tigre impersonated him. I'm pretty sure that if someone impersonated you, you'd get really mad, right? Especially on the internet. If my art career ever p jumps through hoops to become legitimate, I'm sure that there's going to be at least one psychopath that's going to be like, Hey, people, come give me money. I'm totally the real Neon Icy Wings. Come for me for commission. Uh. That already happens to moderately sized artists as it is. That's those type of people that need to be executed in three days or less. That is all. This court is adjourned. I don't know. For some reason, that ending felt kind of odd. Maybe it's because we didn't, like, have much, like, courtroom time with Tigre. Wait, you draw? That's a first? I made my little character in the corner, and I say it every time when I end my stream. If you want to go see more like my little character in the corner, I post art to these various social medias. 
Mr. Wright, I, 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 I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick, in the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, I guess I'll be heading off then. See ya. But wait. Detective Gumshoe. Uh, oh yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. And then there's an awkward silence. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Huh? Oh, well, I was. Well, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around. <laughs> Constantly running away. Wait up, detective. He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. It's thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even any... That wasn't even a... That wasn't even of any use. But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. They should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie, you know Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you for all this. I wanted to believe that, sir. But on the first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. You wanna know what's funny? The instant noodle were created to be food of the future, but it's now the only thing college boys can afford to eat. Which probably make it, it does make it the food of the future. The world has gone to hell. The only thing anybody can afford is instant noodle. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why. He thought I might have done it. I've got to prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. I was wondering why we got a second one. And while you're exonerating Gumshoe from his job, I guess, remember to stay hydrated. Have some weenies. Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. But that's a present from Detective Gumshoe made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight and he was worried about you. Detective Gumshoe? I actually really like weenies, you know? Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know? Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? <laughs> Go right ahead. Ah, oh, that's adorable. So, how is it, Maggie? It's... it's really good. Honestly, why hadn't Gumshoe been fired yet? Everyone threatens to fire him, but they don't go through with it. He's got that underdog protagonist energy. So the case of phony versus real... Blech. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. She's probably going to be found... Uh, <laughs> How many bad things is going to happen to her if she appears in the future, I wonder? Because, like, we gotta hammer that joke home! But that was the third case. Let's see what hints we get for the fourth. Hi! Looking quite dapper there, Mr. Edgeworth. We also got an achievement for beating that case. Chapter <laughs> Edgeworth got a bit of a redesign. Uh... Oh, great. Is there going to be another dead body in a trunk? And there's a person holding a gun. So there's kind of a Mexican standoff going on. There's people on a broken bridge. A little girl is being threatened by a knife held by a buff guy who himself is being uh, threatened with a gun. And then I can only presume that the lady threatening him is going to end up dead and end up in a uh, a car trunk. At least that's what it looks like. And Edgeworth is going to come back, looking ever so anime handsome as ever. And I swear he has a different, like, vest for his outfit. And a bigger, a like, what is that called? That, like, fluffy knot tie. 
Ascot? No. I do like it, though. It's a nice redesign, and it is nice that Edgeworth is back again, apparently, even though we have to destroy him. <laughs> Let me just say, this is a prequel case. A prequel case? Huh. That's interesting. Cause, and if I'm correct, there's only... F Are there four cases for this game? Considering that Edgeworth is popping up here, like, I feel like it's going to be the end of the case, but then they'll have to explain, like, whatever Godot's deal is. Like, what is his deal? He's a weird man. He throws coffee all over the place. He looks like a cyborg... Not cyborg. Cyclops from the X-Men. Uh, don't you see the Turnabout Beginnings? Oh, Turnabout Beginnings. But you never know. It could be about new beginnings with these games. You can never tell. But that is kind of funny, because that implies that Edgeworth had a more fancy design in the olden days. And then he's like, hmm, I'm going to get a new red coat and just have a plain white shirt from now on. Hmm. But, yeah, that'll be interesting to get into. Play this bit, bit of this case today? No, I don't think I will. Mostly because the beginnings of these cases tend to go on a long time. We've been going for an hour and a half, and I just think it'll throw things off ever so slightly. But, and plus I need to go over the previous case, Recipe for a Turnabout. I don't know, it felt weird. Like, I don't hate it. I think it's nice, but turnabout recipe, recipe for a turnabout, just, I don't know, it feels odd in some places. The characters are kind of weird in the case. Like, Tigre is kind of interesting. Violetta is a bit odd, but I think that's part of her charm. But then Kudo, like, I feel like there's just... And then even, like, the, like, Basil lady, she was only just kind of there and didn't really, and was only really there to present exposition about Elg. And then for some reason we needed to break a cyclock with her. Recipe for Turnabout is actually what everyone considers their least favorite case ever. Like, I'm trying to decide, like... When it comes to as a case in totality, I think it has a lot of interesting... Like, I guess that's a thing where, for me, it's more interesting than some other cases. But it's technically, like, when it comes to how it feels and how it plays out, it feels worse than other cases. Like, I would almost, like... <laughs> It's a, it's a weird ranking system where if we go by what's contained within it and the amount of good that it has, there might be one or two cases I would put it over. But when it comes to my total liking of a case and the experience of playing through the case, I would honestly probably even put the first game's tutorial case over it. Like, I don't hate it. It just feels weird. Like, I feel like it could use another draft, is what it feels like. Because, again, it feels like there's too many kooky characters going on that all kind of, like, it's weird. The kooky characters of, like, the the turnabout big top, the, the circus case, the kooky characters make sense. It's a, it's a... It's a, it's a circus, and the big personalities are interesting, but at the same time, we also, like, kind of get to know the circus characters, and they're interesting. And the only really downside of Turnabout Circus, when it comes character-wise, is Trilo is really only relevant for the first part of the case, and then he just kind of drops away into irrelevancy. But... It's just, yeah, it's like the pacing of this case felt weird. The characters feel a bit weird. I think that's mostly it. The idea is cool. The idea that a slimy moneylender who is out to save his own neck it 
pretended to be Phoenix to get the person he framed a guilty verdict, that's a cool idea for a case. But the execution just feels a bit off. Like, the twist that, oh, it happened twice, once for real and then once to create a witness, is kind of cool, but again, pacing issues and the overall feel of the case is off. I don't hate it, but... If I could pick and choose the cases I'd pl I play through, I would probably skip this one just because it's not. It's weird because it's interesting, but not interesting. Because like some of the figuring out is cool, but then you get to a point where. I think that's it. Like, some of it is interesting, but the execution is off. Like, Gumshoe coming to save you is cool. And then that evidence that you, like, got. Because, like, at least the last time Gumshoe saved you from underground mafia types, like, it was a very important thing because, like, it was a very, very important thing because that led you to be able to cross-examine the underworld crime lady. But in this case, the important thing that you got out of Gumshoe saving you, and, like, that should have been a thing. Like, Gumshoe saw Armstrong beating up Phoenix to get a piece of evidence from him under the orders of Furio Tigre. Why couldn't we just have... A detective say, I witnessed this. So obviously, uh, the things we learned yesterday with Armstrong might actually be super true. Because, act honestly, actions speak louder than evidence, if you ask me. We have an eyewitness detective say, this guy has the, ar has the chef under his thumb to the tune of half a million dollars and had him beat up a guy to get this away. That's important. <laughs> so... Yeah, it, again, it feels like it could use another draft. Maybe tweak Kudo. Maybe tweak Armstrong. Because, like, actually, that might be a thing. Maybe, I don't know. I feel like Armstrong should have been less weird. I think that's just it. Armstrong should have been a bit more normal. Still make him an effeminate Frenchman. But I don't know. Make him less of a freak in this case of freaks. We already have weirdo embroidery Japanese man. We already have literally an Oni Tigre. We have creepy Wednesday lady Violetta. I think if we had, like, a more normal character shoved in there, it could have offset the weirdness. It's just like the pacing, the overwhelming weirdness of all the characters. While, yes, interesting is kind of tiring, the twist is cool, but one note. And taking down Furio just felt like a chore in the end because you couldn't go through it like normal because like, oh, I'm a businessman. I need to go and do the thing. Uh, right, I'm going to make it so that there's a penalty system because meh, 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 meh. And like, like the way you take down Tigre is cool by out phonying the phony to get to the truth. That is a cool thing. It's complicated. I don't think it's bad. It's probably on the lower end of quality compared to all the other cases. Like, the villain is kind of one note, so despite him being a big personality, he's not all that funny or all that threatening. The only big threat he really has is the penalty system, which is basically recycle... <laughs> They recycled the, hey, we're going to give you penalty if you press on the wrong things from Turnabout Big Top. Except it was for the big bad of the case. The boss fight. Which, yes, making it like you have to think about it harder to get to the truth as a boss fight can kind of work, but... 
I don't know. I feel like the the third cases in Phoenix Wright games should be interesting, fun breather levels. Yes, still challenging to denote their place as being the penultimate case nine times out of ten, it seems. But it should it just should have been different. There's bases here, there's cool things here, the mystery is interesting. But again, it feels kind of one note where you realize, oh, all we really have is the, it happened twice. That's all they have going for it. I understand why this is every a lot of people's least favorite. When it comes to games I like, I can be lenient on certain things. So me being like, eh, it's okay, is probably testament that... Yeah, a lot of other people probably really don't like this one. Because you have to deal with Kudo. Like, that's a funny thing. Victor Kudo is the character you have to deal with more than any other character in this case, really, it felt like. Like, it felt like he was on the stand more. And he was on the stand harder than everybody else, it felt like. Then in comes in... The Frenchman, who was really easy to break. So I just, like, I just... And I feel like the Frenchman's confession should have been used for more. It's like, we obviously can infer that Furio Tigre is the man who was pulling the strings. So it's just like... I think that's another part. It, the... The mystery is interesting. The evidence is interesting. Putting it all together is interesting. The characters and pacing are a little wonky. But the main thing, I think, the main reason why this one feels off, at least to me, is the the courtroom segments are off somehow. Because I think it's more obvious what's going on, but you have to, like directly address the things that are being said in the cross-examination. And so you kind of have to swerve around a lot to be able to say what you want to say in this case. So even though you have an idea of what happened and you have an idea of what proof you need, you still need to like piece it together puzzle-like against the like words of the people. So yeah, overall, I think... The issue with this case is primarily pacing and a bit character-wise. I think a, a big chunk of why people dislike this case is probably the characters and how they influence the mystery. But to me, it's the pacing. Maybe if the pacing was a wee bit better, people might have liked this case a bit better as well. At least not loathe it as much. Like, when I... If I were to say it like... Just focus on the good and interesting aspects. I would probably say that this is quote unquote even better than the second case of the first game because uh, the second case of the first game just really let me down in the overall. It felt like it should be more, but in the end, like if we accumulate the recipe for turnabout in totality. It is probably the worst case. Because while there are others that like... Like, let's take a look at Turnabout. Uh, no, not Turnabout. It was like Rise from the Ashes. Rise from the Ashes. I know a lot of people hate that case. I love it. I love that case. It has issues. It's wonky. It is weird. But it is fun. And it feels grandiose. Recipe for Turnabout is kind of a basic, like, that's the thing. Atmosphere. Pacing, atmosphere, and character. Those are the issues. It doesn't feel grand all that much, aside from the slight bit of taking down. Like, I think that's another thing, like, yeah, what chat was saying. That Phoenix should have been more indignant that somebody posed as him. And it should have built up, built up to this grand scene of... The guy being put down like, aha, through the power of slightly phony evidence, you bring down a phony to find the truth. That would be a cool moment. But the atmosphere, pacing, and characters of this case kind of dragged it down, so it just didn't have the feel that it ne really needed. 
I don't hate it. I understand why others do. It is probably the least good Ace Attorney trilogy case that I have experienced so far. But, yes, I do believe that that will be it for now. Next time, we will be going back in time, which is bookends. I just realized the first case in this game was a prequel in which we played as ba -ba -ba, played as Mia. So I, I wonder if we'll do that again. I wonder if we'll play as Mia for this prequel case. Or what if we played as... I, I doubt we'd play as Edgeworth. I think a lot of fans would like it, but I don't think it would work well because that's kind of what the Investigation series is about. Who knows? Maybe it was a, a prelude to the Investigations games. We'll have to see. But yes, overall, Recipe for Turnabout, it's fine, but probably the worst case so far. So, yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels, an edited content YouTube channel, me on Icy Wings. I swear, content is coming eventually. I just have to batter my brain into being nice so I can edit the goddamn video. <laughs> but then if you prefer to watch uh, me play games live on stream, you can catch some streams at the YouTube channel, Neon Icy Games. And then if you want to see, like games of the past that I've played, like the previous Ace Attorney cases, or things like the Mass Effect trilogy, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, just tons of games, you can catch them all uploaded to the Neon Icy Games channel, where all these streams end up in video form. If you prefer to watch these streams on Twitch, you can catch me at twitch.tv slash neonicywings. If you want other things from me, you can, if you like the art in the corner, my little guy, I upload art to my various social medias like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Pillowfort, Inkblot. There are so many places now, which is why you can find links to all of them in my link tree. linktr.ee slash neonicywings, and the direct link to that can be found in all the various link places and descriptions and bios of the various sites that I am on. And there you can find links to all those art social medias, as well as links to my writing, if you fancy that, like the archive of our own profile of mine. And then, if you, there's also the link to my Patreon if you want to throw a dollary do my way to slightly stave off the entropy of the universe from crushing my soul. The world is evil. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.